Well, here we are again, XFM, on a Saturday. Just gone one o'clock, Steve, mm -hmm. if I'm very much mistaken. But we're not here, no. as such. We're away again, gallivanting <laughs> around. Yeah. Uh, um, we've got to do the special sort of best of again. Okay. Which we did a few weeks ago, so this is the best of the last three weeks. <laughs> um, which I think is, I mean, I think it's the best three weeks we've ever had. <laughs> but I'd like it condensed into two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some great music as well in there? Yeah, there'd be some great music, uh, uh interspersed with, with fine chat that you've already heard. <laughs> yeah. Well, except this bit, this bit's new. We've actually, uh, out of the kindness of our heart, we've come in, um, we've come in last week. Yeah. Yeah. And we've done a few clips, just because we felt a bit guilty about shooting off yeah. and leaving. I mean, I, even now, having heard this link, I'm beginning to wonder if it was worth our time. Oh, dear. You know, I've, I've said in the past to you, Rick, that my grandparents, so I love them dearly, but it's like, for the last 30 years, they've been waiting to die. I know, It's yeah. like they just sort of, it's like, you know, the novelty wore off of life. You know, <laughs> life just, in the 50s. Yeah, they got kind of bored of it. Life, yeah, in the 40s, <laughs> it was brilliant. All sat around the old Joannas, the bombs <laughs> yeah. fell, singing, they loved that. In the 50s, you know, that was great as well, because that was the post-war years. It was, you know, it was a bit tight in the pocket, but it was alright, everyone pulled together. And then the 60s came along, all the crazy music, the let's, funny hair. Let's stay in bed. They, they, exactly, and they basically stayed in bed. And, uh, it was one Christmas when, um, my, my, my grandmother said to my dad, uh, what do you like for Christmas? What, what do you fancy for Christmas? And, uh, this must have been, I don't know, 20 years ago? She said, uh, what do you, uh, what do you fancy for Christmas, Ron? And he went, well, you know, I could do with a nice big kind of warm winter overcoat. She said, don't worry about that. He said, don't worry about that, because your father will be dead soon. It's right, you can have his. Meaning my granddad. Well, to be honest with you, my father's still waiting. <laughs> Which is good news. Good news for my grandfather. <laughs> Less good news for He's my dad. He's freezing. He's freezing. He's freezing. Oh, he out. How is he today? He's yeah. fine. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I'm freezing. It is very, such a weird a mindset, that. I think it's that, to me, is what sums up people from that older generation, the 40s and 50s. And it seems to me that you've got that kind of mindset. It's like you were born in the 30s. Uh, whenever you talk of your childhood, it's like you had, like, a baked potato to take well, to I, school. I, uh, and no, a poop I, and a stick is a Christmas The gift. other thing is, I think that it, 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 that sort of generation, it, it seems that the man is dependent on the woman. Mm. There's a total dependence. Oh, absolutely, if, yeah. if she dies, he's done. Yes. He's yes. done for. Yeah. It, it just pine away. If he dies, she's got 30 years of pottering. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and going yeah. to like, you know, uh, the, the youth club and the yeah, church. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. It, it's sort of like that it's, it, it was, it's sad, of course it's sad for them, but it's so, not the end of their life. No, sure. And it sort of is the other way around. I, I don't know, know why that mean. is. Yeah. It's terrible. That's a little melancholy thought for uh, I know, Christmas I've really time. brought it, you brought it down, you've brought it down, I've brought it down. This isn't a nice show at all, this is terrible. Well, We're gonna have people make, just killing themselves. What? Well, I, d I didn't really want to make it a Christmassy type show because I don't, you don't really like it. Oh, he's done it again. Well, he did Christmas once, didn't like it. No, my dad always said. Oh, right, steady on. Dad said Christmas morning was for like you know for me, so he used to stay in bed. Mm. So he, ne he never. <laughs> That's got brilliant. That's a great thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Christmas morning's for you. <laughs> Run wild. Do what you want. Just yeah, don't so, bother so me. I'm going to Honolulu <laughs> for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's great! Dad, it's Christmas, do I have to do anything? No. So my mum used to get up, cos she used to like to see me face light up, you know, when I, when I opened the presents. And then, uh... <laughs> to keep the fireworks. And then, uh... <laughs> then I'd have to go to my bedroom from about six o'clock onwards, cos, like, my mum and dad were into having big Christmas parties, and I wasn't, like, old enough to go. Right. So they'd say, right, you know, you've had your fun there, you go up to your bedroom, stay in there. <laughs> and really? Yeah, I remember one year, right, I got got a train set, that's what I wanted. Yeah. Right? It's brilliant. <laughs> uh, playing with it all day. I thought, I don't mind about the party, I'm happy staying up here, playing with this. Brother comes in, he's had a few, right, he's going, yeah, give us a go on your How train set. How old is he? He's, he's a bit older than me, so he, he might have been like, uh, let's see. Well, let, he, let him be 18. About, yeah, probably about 18, 19, and something like that. I was, well, I had a train set, so, I don't know, about- Fourteen. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Right, so, uh, so I'm playing on that, loving it and stuff, and then he comes in and goes, oh, gives a go. He turns the transformer up to, like, fourteen. He went really fast for about five seconds, broke it, and then he went back downstairs. Wow. So Christmas, I ain't even got Sounds to Christmas Sounds like Day. the, uh, Conservative government with, uh, British Rail. Satire, that <laughs> is. Satire, Rick, well, I just thought that then, sat satire. It's if there's saying. any satirical it's, it's, shows it's, listening or it magazines- doesn't It doesn't work in any way, cos there's, 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 the analogy falls down, no, apart from there being a train. Think it through, though, British Rail was trains. <laughs> yeah. And the government broke the trains in many ways, well, they didn't break them, like, not officially breaking them, but they kind oh, of- yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it does work, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty pleased with that. And I can't, and, and no one's asked him to be on Have I Got News For You. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Cos it- It's strange, that. <laughs> Yeah. When you've got a satirical mind that that's, that's as quick as that. Yeah. Right. And it, it's broke your little train set. So what did you do? 
I just like watch telly and had some sausages. I bet you were happy with that though, weren't you? Uh, it's a bit annoying though, isn't it, when your main present of the year has been broke. And, and did, then, it, uh, did it ever get it fixed? No, that was it. That was it. Put away. I'm intrigued why your parents wouldn't let you come and join in the festive fun. Was because it like really debauched down there? Was it like eggnog no, everywhere? And well, no, but I mean, that's fair enough. Six seems a little bit early, but I just think, you know, if you're a kid, you, you, you know, he had those fun, put them to bed, put them to bed at eight, maybe. <laughs> and he was. on Christmas Day? I thought that was a day for family. Well, not if there's a party going on. I well, don't have the party on the Christmas Day. Well, that's, that's, that's another option. Yeah. yeah. Your parents are weird, aren't they? A strange breed. Well, I think that was the year, right? I, uh, <laughs> You're talking about buying presents and stuff. I think I did treat my mum to- I didn't buy my dad anything. I think that was like when I got a bit older I used to get my dad something because he wasn't that bothered anyway. No. Mm. So, uh, got me mum, uh, it was a cheap shop, right? <laughs> of course. Uh, Thank God for that. Called Snips. Right? <laughs> so I went in there and I thought, let's see what I can get her. And remember, uh, Victoria Plum? I don't think so. Well, it's like a, a fairy character. Right. Right? I mean, mum's into gnomes <laughs> and stuff, right? So, I thought, right. She must be pleased with you, then. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Victoria uh, Plum. I was thinking, is that one of the neighbours? Is it, is it like a brandy yeah, do liqueur? Do you remember Victoria Plum? Victoria Plum. Victoria Plum, yeah, it's like a little fictional sort of character, right? Okay, okay. So, uh, so I saw it, I thought, yeah, she'll love that. Right. So I did my paper round, saved up for two weeks, right? Aww. Got that sorted, went to Snips. Bought the uh, Victoria Plum. Next day, I'm in I'm in town with her, right? So I think, ah, oh, I know what I'll do. I said, come come in here a minute, right? Uh, so we go in and we're looking around, and I tested her, right? I went, look at that there. That's all right, isn't it? And she goes, oh, it's bloody awful. <sighs> oh, Carl. <laughs> oh, Carl. I just I I. Oh God! So then Christmas Day comes. I oh. said, "Don't bother opening it." She said, "No, no, why?" I said, oh Don't no! Why did you still give it to her? So well, it's too late. I'd already bought it. Oh God! So she opened it, and I was like, <sighs> and she said, "Oh, that's nice." I said, "Why are you saying that?" I said, "The other day, said it's bloody awful." She said, oh no, I thought you were pointing at something else. Brilliant. Oh no! So that's why I don't get anyone anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Play record! Oh God! Oh! Oh no! Gonna put my foot in a pistol! XFM 104.9, we're not here. Um, this next clip is one of my favourite clips. Uh, look, it needs no introduction. Here it is. Something, uh, <laughs> something else we're giving away. Go on. Um, The Shining. <laughs> it's, it's more throwing away, isn't it? Like, once again, is it on video? Once again, it's on VHS. Just because you buy it out of your own money, Carl, stop being so mean. And I want to watch it tonight, because it's one of those films that, um... <laughs> so you're, you're gonna watch this video, <laughs> and then you're gonna send it to someone as a prize? Yeah, it's one of them thick films that... <laughs> so, sorry, you, you just said yes to that without <laughs> blinking. Oh, yeah. You don't think, like, Les Dennis doesn't have a quick go in the car <laughs> on Family <laughs> Fortune before he gives it away? <laughs> it costs five ninety nine. Jim Bowen has a go at those his nerd towel racks. <laughs> it costs five ninety nine, Carl. Okay, this is, uh, Carl, uh, in, in the classic The Shining. And what's the question? Well, we might ask that afterwards. Okay, then. Still, uh... Still try to write the, uh, the book then? No? Yes. Good. Funny, someone, uh, told me the other day, weird thing about a typewriter, the top row of letters, the longest word you can write, is typewriter. I'll, I'll just show you, just... That's weird, isn't it? It's just, the typewriter being... You're not, you're not in the mood, are you? You're just gonna, you're in one of those grouchy moods again, that you get into when you're writing. I'm not being grouchy, I just wanna finish my work. Yeah, it's just, just, she's been a bit funny, a bit off hand than that. <coughs> Let me explain something to you. Go on. Whenever you come in here and interrupt me, you're breaking my concentration, you're distracting me, and it will then take you time to get back to where I was. Understand? Yeah, but I, I just was coming in to try and cheer you up, you know, if you... I mean, I, I'm full of ideas as well, you know, if you're having a problem coming up with stuff. Got loads of stuff, loads of ideas you could write about. The other day I read about this airy Chinese kid. <clears throat> what do you want me to do about it? No, it's just that it, it could make a, a good book, do you know what I mean? Sort of following round. Uh, That's swell. 
Well, I I'd buy it. You know. But if you don't want to know, we'll have to. Don't bother doing it. But do you know what I mean? It just airy Chinese. Cause it's, it's weird because they're not normally that airy over there. Yeah, this kid caked in it. But if you don't care, I wouldn't touch one hair on his goddamn little head. You don't have to touch any hair on his head. Like I say, he's covered. Leave the head alone if you want. Touch his hands. He's, he's totally covered in it. But it, it, I love the little son of a bitch. Well, don't go that far. You haven't met him. But I can sort it <laughs> I'd out. I'd do anything for him. I don't think he'd expect that much. Just take him to the barbers three or four times a week. You know, he's a good, good little kid. In fact, I'll do it. I think I'll write a book on him. Yeah. How do you think you can handle that? Yeah. You're not too busy, are you? Well, I, yeah, I'm pretty busy. I've got to sort out some uh, some monkey facts for the show this Saturday, but I, I reckon I can still. Why don't you start right now and get out of here? All right. I will. You're going to be like that. Couldn't borrow a pen, could I? See you later. There you Haunting. Go. Haunting stuff there. Carl Pilkerton in The Shining. You know in the film Jack Nicholson goes crazy because the suggestion is he's maybe possessed by demons that maybe uh, are in the in the hotel. But you know if I was stranded in a desolate hotel removed from all human contact with Carl, I'd go mental with an axe <laughs> without being possessed by demons. <laughs> That's more <laughs> chilling to me, trying to get some work done and you keep wandering in. I'm trying to get Carl to spend a couple of days in the caravan with me, <laughs> just for the hell of it, and he, he, was, he won't. I've offered him money, won't I? I, I think it'd be a great laugh, wouldn't it, Carl? Oh yeah, great. That would be terrifying. No, I want to film it. I just want to film you. it. Like a little video diary, there's Carl there, he's just waking up. Well, just if so I was stranded in there, that would be like being- I may as well be with Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees. <laughs> it, that's- that's more scary. The thing the is, two of you. Ricky doesn't mess you about as much as he messes me about. No, you see, you've given him an inch. You've given him an inch and he's taken a yard. 12.30 you got in today. In the 30 minutes between 12.30 and 1. The old bin lid on the head. He wanted to do that again. Yep. Uh, <laughs> squeezing my head, think he had a go at. And a karate chop on the back of the neck. Yeah. All in 30 minutes. Yeah. Who else can say that? <laughs> Who else can say that? Who else can say that? XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais show with uh, Steve Merchant, hello there. Good. And um, we're not here this week, we're off jetting around the world, so we've pre-recorded these links. Uh, the time is currently somewhere between one and three o'clock. So, uh, a time check there from Steve Merchant. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, and, uh, oh, what, what about this weather? Um, isn't it warm, stroke, edit that, Carl, cold, okay, whichever one. Mm. Um, I'm pleased to see that the congestion charge has had some considerable effect. Had no effect. So just, yeah. Um, oh, wasn't that great on telly last night, the film? <laughs> yeah. I particularly enjoyed last night's EastEnders, Coronation Street, Brookside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> Child of mine. <laughs> On oh. XFM 104.9. I enjoyed that. Yeah. That yeah. was good. It rocks. It I, rocks hope, I hope the audience was playing it loud like us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky Gervais, <sighs> Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, look at him yawning. How rude is that? Carl, what's wrong with you, man? Have you been up late? A little bit. <laughs> Girlfriend was away, wasn't she, yesterday? Yeah, I always have a problem with that. I always have a... Because you don't go to bed, do you, early? Do you know what I mean? You what? sort of think. I, I just always mm. find that thing that if you know you're used to living with someone, yeah, one of you will go, well, "Let's go to bed." Then you'll go, "All right." Um, but when you're on your own, you go, oh, "You just forget to go to bed." I just to stay up. Okay, I was, stop, stop eating now, Carl. You've had all the food. That's just the plate. All right. Okay. Yeah. No, I just I, I stayed up and watched. Um, it was a thing on about Dracula. <laughs> right. <laughs> what Dracula? And I found a flaw in it. Go on. Uh, not not the fact that is the living dead and is. <laughs> No. Nope. drinks blood to stay alive and he doesn't reflect and you can in turn mirrors. Into a bat. Well, and you can- go on. The mirror thing, you can't look in mirrors, can he? Well he can look in mirrors but he can't see himself in a mirror. Yeah. Right, that still doesn't work. Go, go on. on. Go it on. doesn't work at all, Carl. It doesn't work go anyway. Come on. Well. Centre parting's always really neat. His centre parting's always really <laughs> How neat. How does he do it if he can't look in the mirror? <laughs> Bl blood on the floor or something it was called. Rubbish. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love the flaw in the Dracula film is that his centre part is too neat. How did he do it without a mirror? Ah, oh. was it a documentary about Dracula? No, yeah. there was the real Dracula. Called... The real Dracula. <laughs> yeah, the real yeah. Dracula. The it's just a film. It had blood on the floor or something. It's called. Yeah. It's rubbish. Yeah. We had a little lunch yesterday, didn't we? We did indeed. That was a nightmare. Yeah. I hate going out with you two. I, I was explaining to Carl, right? I, I like to excite Carl's imagination, right? And, uh, um, if it involves chimps or monkeys, all the better. Um, brains he likes, parts of the body, deformity. You know, I know, I know where to, you know, what buttons to push. And, um, I told him about this thing. I don't know if, uh, uh, any of you out there, um, know about this. Um, but there's an experiment they did in the, in the 50s, um, a, uh, a clinical psychology experiment where uh, there's your two hemispheres of the brain, okay? They're joined by a thing called the corpus callosum, right? Which is a, just a little f flap of skin, like a little scart lead that joins your two hemispheres. And what they did, they cut that in half and they thought it was a cure for schizophrenia, but what it turned out to be, or epilepsy, I think, I can't remember, um, uh, was that your two sides of your brains didn't function together. You couldn't get information. I was telling Carl all this thing, and I, one of the things I told him was that they did it on a monkey, and it fought itself over a nut, like its right arm was connected, you know, by its left lobe of the brain, and it was fighting over itself. And Carl went instead of like thinking this is amazing experiment, he went, "Would it would it have been happy if you'd given it two nuts?" <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you started off by explaining, and I remember you mentioned because I, I was watching the two of you as you were describing it to him. You said, "Of course, one side of the brain deals with uh, symbolism," and as you said the word symbolism, I noticed Carl drift away from looking at you, <laughs> pick up his mobile phone, <laughs> and start pressing buttons randomly. <laughs> And I, I thought it was the word symbolism that got him. And I noticed it took you just a moment longer. And I think the first thing you said was, "When did I lose you?" Yeah, I know I'd lost him. It's extraordinary, and he doesn't even try I to think disguise it. I said "Not look a chair" at one point as well. Right, yeah. And I, I knew I was dicing with death there. Yeah. But yeah. um, uh, did, but I told you, you tried to look it up, didn't you, on the on the web? You didn't find anything about yeah, it. The yeah? spelling, the spelling of it's what? What is it again? What's the word? Corpus callosum. Yeah. I was, I was, I couldn't put, couldn't do it. Couldn't no, put, it's a point. Yeah. Don't bother. Give up. Don't bother. Give up. Um, so, any, if anyone knows any interesting facts about that, that, uh... I don't expect yours hasn't been cut in half, has <laughs> it, Carl? That would, again, what explain something. I'll tell you what we will be talking about later. I don't know if you're, do you, if you're sort of aware of them, Steve. Go on. Bonobos. Oh, I, told I don't him know about, much about bonobos. I told really? him about them. Um, he was looking for stuff. I said, put in bonobo. He was having no luck with chimp. Um, and they're, uh, they're a, they're a form of chimpanzee, but, um, they're, they're even closer to us. Evolutionally speaking, they've got their social... Um, groups are more like ours, they're, they're more intelligent. And he was loving it, weren't you? Just so is it, is it human bonobo Carl? <laughs> is yeah, that how it works yeah, on the yeah. evolutionary no, ladder? chimp Carl. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> talking about them. So yeah. we're talking about bonobos, you're excited about that? Yeah, That's yeah. Uh, coming up in, uh, monkey news? Um, uh, no, I think it's a bit of a monkey bonus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. <laughs> that was very, very funny. What indeed. a wonderful clip that was. I enjoyed Do you remember it. that? I, yeah. yeah. Well, it was in a, couple, a few weeks ago, wasn't <laughs> yeah. it, really? I mean, I think it was last week. We'd have to have very, very bad memories mm. not to remember that mm. hilarious clip. I'd like to hear that again maybe in a couple of weeks' time when I'm away. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, it's, it's embarrassing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And we, you know, but the, you know, the good thing is, uh, on telly, I feel a bit guilty about putting out shoddy rubbish because I'm getting paid an awful lot. <laughs> yes. But here, you know, I, I don't give a sh They can bleep that. They will do. They will do. <laughs> Bit of David Bowie. Uh, when's that ever at anyone, Steve? Never. Lady Stardust off Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington is in the middle of educating me. Colon, then. Educate me. Did I tell you the time when, uh, <laughs> the doctor said, uh, I was gonna die? Alright, keep talking. Right. Ages ago, um, must have been about 15, right? And, uh, at lunchtime there was this we used to have a choice of stuff to do at lunchtime, right? We used to have um like a like a burger place that had an arcade machine in it, right? So we used to go there and play on that and have a burger. Or there was this baker's, right, that my mum worked at and uh, did great cakes and stuff, right? So um she used to like bring some home and that, but she couldn't always bring them home every night because you know, they'd, they'd cost money and she used to get them for free. And they used to say they'd rather chuck them away than give them to the staff because there's a chance that the cream might be off. 
Right. Right, so they used to chuck them round the back. So I used to go round the back with my mate and eat a load. Brilliant. Scavenging, yeah. eating out of bins. <laughs> no, it was really- it wasn't out of bins, they were still in trays, but they just stacked them up near the bins, right? So this got out, I mean it used to be a chocker. Now, once the school found out, everybody used to go there and it'd be like, well, have a cake. <laughs> the headmaster crawling through, <laughs> yeah. fighting the kids off. Right, so <laughs> I'd have like, uh, you know, you'd just eat, I don't know, six jam donuts or something, and then you'd spend your dinner money on the arcade machine. Brilliant. Right? So it was a good, good afternoon, really, right? So you'd do that, and this one day I must have had six or seven uh, jam donuts, a few Congress tarts. Uh, <laughs> Oh. Just, I love them, it's me, I can't get them in London, right? So I'd have some of them. And if anyone can get a Congress tart, um, for Carl in London, please let him know. So anyway, this day, that, that was just a normal day, do you know what I mean? You'd, once, yeah. twice a week, you'd have a load of cake. In your life, yeah. Yeah, a so normal anyway. day in your life. Uh, were, were the frog boys there with the, with the <laughs> webbed hands and the big heads? So, and the horse in the city? Uh, yeah. But the day after, one of these days, I had really bad cramp in my belly. Right? Okay. I was like in agony, could yeah. hardly walk, so I said to my mum, ha. Oh. <laughs> could hardly stagger to the free cake. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... I was in absolute agony. I said, I think, I don't like doctors, but you'll have to get a doctor in because I don't know what it is, I can't walk. He gets the doctor around, uh, I won't say his name, but he said, uh, he said, well, doesn't look like he's got long left. Blimey. So I was a bit like, hang on a minute, I've only had a few cream donuts. Yeah. My man was panicking. Sure. He went, my dad came in from work, she said, oh, something's really bad with Carl, I think it's serious, it's, you know, the doctor's only ain't got long left. So he said, what, he said that and just left? So she said, yeah. I said, I'll have to call him then. So he called him up, said, uh, what's all this about, you know, Carl hasn't got long left, how long's he got? So he goes, oh, I was only messing. He's just got, he's just had some bad cream. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> well, the thing is, Carl, I like the fact your mum didn't ask any questions. I know. <laughs> she yeah, didn't go into detail. No, 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 well, I, can I, you I, explain I, more, Doctor? No, I got a shoe off. I, no, but uh, she doesn't. She I, doesn't no, like no, I'm, you know, I don't want to diss you or your family, but I imagine if I was there, I'd have known the Doctor was joking. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I, 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 I sound very arrogant there, but I imagine he went, what's he been doing? Yeah, I had about six cream cones. Oh, right. Oh, wow. Uh, he hasn't got long to live then. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think the Doctor did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just love the idea your mum just let him go. Yeah. Terrified, thinking, yeah. well, I'm not going to probe him, he's, he's, that's it then. Dad comes in, hi honey, I'm home. Anything happened? Uh, the doctor said Carl's gonna die and then left. <laughs> Did he? I'll call him. <laughs> but anyway, that's why, uh, these sort of things fascinate me. So, right. we'll move on to this next one, right, which is brilliant. Go Dead on, short story, so, right, uh, old woman, <laughs> about seventy years old. Yeah. Uh, she's normally fit and healthy and stuff, nothing wrong with her, she's having a good life. And, uh, one day, she goes for a check to the doctors, yep. just to check herself out, because she's yep. getting on a bit. Yeah. Uh, says, take your clothes off and that. So, she does. And, uh, checks her out, says, yeah, you're looking good, you're looking good. Uh, turn round. Uh, he said, oh, God. He says, you got a, a tumour on your buttock. Right? So, she goes, oh. What, can you do anything to sort it out? So, they go, yeah, 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 we could book you in for an operation, it's best if we remove this. Books are in for an operation, operation day comes, strip her down and that, they're all stood round, the doctors, start to operate, it only turns out it's a pork chop that she sat on five years earlier and it had stuck to her buttock. Right, Carl. <laughs> I right, can fold you. I'm, I'm, I'm not, honest. Right, I'm, no, I'm, listen. Okay, no, no, let serious. Me, okay, Carl, I'm telling you now, I'm leaving. I'm no. never, I'm never doing this show again. No, I'm serious. Honestly. You're talking, I, I, I've never had any such bu What do you mean? You couldn't believe it. No, when I read it, I said, I've got to uh, tell Ricky this that. This woman had a pork chop stuck to her ass for five years, you mental case. <laughs> of course she didn't. <laughs> That is a blinding record, and before that, Rick, what do you make of those adverts? They were great, weren't they? I like them, yeah. I, I'm, I'm gonna buy all them products on the way home. And that's endorsed by Ricky Gervais, he's won awards. Yeah. Rick, do you remember this? This was a hilarious No. Movie. No, you remember this. When you hear it, uh, it was when Carl said something that was basic- well, I think for a lot of people it sounded like a lot of old bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got now? Right, so we, we're looking into animals that we get rid of. I've spoken to someone about snails, I've spoken to someone about jellyfish, and that, and uh 
looking at cockroaches today. She is an expert, she's just not- not just some random person. No, she works in a museum, where- a good museum, I said I'd give it a plug. It's the one near Knightsbridge, it's got dinosaurs and that in it, it's worth seeing. And the National History Museum? Yeah. So, uh... He's <laughs> not sure. He's <laughs> not sure. <laughs> this is Go what on. happened. <laughs> Now, what I'll do, I'll tell you as much as, as I know, and then you can fill me in if I'm right or wrong, and then at the end of it we'll get to the bottom of whether we need them or not. Okay. All right, so, uh, first of all, uh, the first thing that, that, I, that I found out is that, um, that they have a 18 knees. Uh, that's not exactly possible. They're insects, so they have six legs. Yeah. And a knee is usually the junction between femur and tibia, that sort of classic human knee and every other animal knee, so with six legs you can only have six knees. Uh, could somebody sort of got mistaken for seeing one that was a bit double jointed? Cover I, I think you're grasping at straws or something. Alright, well, uh, well, we might have to come back to that one then. Okay. Um, they can hold the breath for 40 minutes. Well, they don't do that. Because they don't breathe in the same way as us. They breathe through little spiracles, holes down the, the side of the body, so... Um, no, if they're not a very apt simile because the, the method of breathing is so different. What do you mean? Because insects have a, a totally different system. They don't have lungs in the way that we do, and just breathing through one part of the body. They're, they're actually breathing through every segment of the body all of the time. So even though they've got the mouth shut, they might be able the to slide. Nothing to do with breathing. So Only just feeding. So you see, maybe that's where someone's gone wrong. Someone's got hold of one and sort of taped its mouth up or something, and so got bored after forty <laughs> minutes and said, "Well, we'll call it right." Unkind thing to do to an insect, even to a cockroach. Yeah, but it's all. You can't do that. Yeah, but. No, pretty unkind thing to do anything to anything, even a cockroach. Something else I found out. Yeah. They can live for a week without an head. Well, that's true if they don't deep to death in the process. But the weird thing is, when I told you that they had eighteen knees, you seemed a bit sort of like don't don't talk ridiculous. But yeah. then we're talking about an animal that can live without an head. Uh, so so there's a little bit of truth in that one, yeah. Yes. Why, when it was invented, has it got that facility? Say if someone said to humans. We could do that with humans, and, you know, if you lose your head in some accident, it gives you a bit of time to sort of go back to your, f to your family and maybe write them, write them a note. You won't be able to have a chat, but write them a note saying, it was my own fault, and uh, it was nice knowing you. Oh, well, that I would be a useful facility, I agree, but cockroaches are great survivors. I mean, they've been around for over 300 million years. They're one of the most primitive insects. All right. Well, I've also, um, is it true that they do a lot of resting? Apparently they can sort of rest for 75 percent of the time. Rest? Yeah, they just, just sit about doing nothing. It's probably true of a, a vast proportion of, of the world's fauna. Well, I mean, not. maybe maybe the 25 uh, percent that they are working, they're really giving it some, so and it might make up. they're probably searching out food and, uh, yeah, they can slow down considerably. You can chill insects in the fridge and they'll become very, very quiet. You might think they're dead. Yeah, but, but I'm sure, you know, if, if we were sat in a fridge, we, you know, we'd go a bit quiet, wouldn't we? You know? I, well, uh, you might not know much about it, of course. Yeah, but... Not quite reading the, the right sources. Well, I've been using the internet. I'm sure there are many useful sources that you could find there, but some of those seem to have been a little, um, misleading to you. So, so you don't agree with, with a lot of what I've told you there? No. So, cockroaches, can we get rid of them? No. So we're keeping them then? I would say so, yes. Yeah. I think we should get her on more often because she sounds like she'd be a bit of an ally. Really, because she knew immediately that you were talking nonsense. She even said, "I think you should be more concerned about your sources," which I've been trying to tell you for a year. Right? The fact, I mean, I mean, eighteen knees. Where did you get that from? 
was, uh, was on the uh, internet. Uh, they can hold their breath for 40 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what, I don't know what you read and take on. Mad world, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> If you've just tuned in, it's XFM 104.9. You've got that bit right. Ricky Gervais Shoe with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. Carl is actually in a little booth. We're not in the studio, you see. We're, this is pre recorded. We recorded this last week because we we're away. And it's sort of like the best of. Best of the last three weeks since last time we were away when we put out the best of. Okay, what's the next yeah. one? What's the ne educating well, Ricky? I don't know. Uh, see, like I say, I was lo looking around and there's stuff that is interesting. Right? I was looking on the web. But there's no point. Well, it's just that I found one about, uh um, What's the point? About a lad who, uh, eight years old, yeah. but he's still breastfed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you can get anything out of that. <laughs> Is that what his mum said? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you mean I don't know if I can get anything out of that? You don't need to. No, it's, it's just that, you know- Where did you read that? That was on the internet. Oh. oh well, yeah. Um, You're always unspe unspecific when you mention that. It's just it was on the internet. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think what I put in. I think I put in Y to see if I'd confuse a computer. <laughs> <laughs> And then, Go! You are... No, I did, I did, no I, honestly. I did a search, put in why, and I ca he came <laughs> up with funny things that, like, why d is this person doing that, why is that... And it had a picture of this eight-year-old lad, sort of, you know, <laughs> on his mum's nipple. And, um, it was saying, you know, <laughs> is, is, is this healthy? <laughs> Ooh. Mm. You sure that wasn't asking you that question? <laughs> Uh, what, you, I put in why <laughs> just to confuse, confuse the computer. The computer. <laughs> like, the computer go, what do you mean? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, look, but, yeah. Uh, Last week, I, I was walking, um, uh, home with him, and I went, uh, I got a, he was saying something stupid, and I went, I've got a competition for next week, let's do a phone-in, and it's called Carl Pilkington, genius or fool. Yeah. Right? And he went, no. No. I went, why not? He went, well, uh, it'd be confusing, because they say, there's no difference between genius and being a fool. <laughs> <laughs> we do, though, don't we? No, we do that's, that, no, no, that. but it's rubbish, and people say there's a fine line between madness and genius, and, yeah. you know, it's a ridiculous soundbite. Uh, they don't say there's a fine line between a genius and an idiot. Well, the people who do are idiots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what would you do there, though, just to sort of wrap that little thing up? What would you do? That lad loves his mum's... His mum's milk. What are you ta- what are you asking me to come up with? <laughs> no, I'm just- A title for the- the story- No, 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 it's what? just- it's just what would you do, right? What do you mean, what would I do? Well, it's causing a bit of a problem in the area, right? <laughs> what area? In- in America, I think it was. Oh, America, a problem, are they? George Bush is worried about this kid. Well, who's no, breastfeeding right, at eight. Imagine it like this, right? Right. Look, so, Carl, what are you asking me? About this spurious story you saw on the internet? I saw on the internet, this yeah. eight-year-old lad, he likes his mum's milk, yeah. And it's saying, is this right? Should it? No, be it's not. There? But what? What? What, <laughs> what do you want Ricky to do about it? It's not his responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but but the little town that he lives in, they're all yeah. causing an uproar, right? <laughs> Going, this isn't right. You know, no. I can't let my kid play out in case he's in the garden with his mum getting a bit hungry, right? Yeah. So, oh God, what should they do? Because his mum's saying, well, he likes it. Yeah. And he, you know, what? So what do you do? I don't know the laws. <laughs> No, but I'm not asking you to sort out the laws. I'm just saying, if you lived in that neighbourhood, what yeah. would you say? If you went up to him and said, "Look, everyone's getting a bit fed up with this." Look. I'd say, what, 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 what would I do? What do you mean? What would I do? <laughs> what, what are you asking me? <laughs> right, it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. What are you asking me? What are you asking me and Steve and well, the I'm public? I'm just saying. Say if you live next door to this woman. Yeah. Right. The kid's hungry. Eight years old. He's out playing on his bike and he goes, Mum, I'm getting a bit peckish and he goes, All right, son. She whops one out <laughs> Um and he starts having his having his milk, right? <laughs> you live you live next door, you're putting your washing out and you see this going on. <laughs> you're getting a bit sick of it because it's gone on for months. <laughs> Eight so, years, I see. Why is it your business? Just why are you why are you such a nosy neighbour that you're concerned? What would you do, Carl? Let's turn it back on him. Yeah. What would you do? What's your solution? What would you do? Well, I thought 
I'd say, right, why are you doing this? And she'd say, um, because he likes it. <laughs> and I go, all right then, put it in a bowl first. <laughs> <laughs> Genius. So and you think that would sort that out? No, oh. because I, I was thinking about the whole thing, right, and you do that when you're a baby and everything's all right, innit? Yeah. yeah. No one bats an eyelid at sure. a little baby having, having a bit of milk from its mum's breast, right. right? Yeah. You'd almost say it was natural. But you grow out of it. <laughs> it's like, you don't see. It got me thinking about things you don't see. And you don't see... <laughs> Did you put this into a computer? Show me things you don't see. What else no. don't you see? Well, you don't see, like, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> you never... <laughs> oh! So what? Oh, no, no. <laughs> you know the... You know the terrible thing about all this, Steve? Is he's right. You don't see it all No, man I know twitch. that's a but, terrible but, thing. So what they have got, right, they've made old man toffees, haven't they? They've come up with rovers. <laughs> Is that a song? Oh, oh God! You don't see it. <laughs> so they've got their worthers, right? Yeah. So <laughs> Look at him. You Forget think he's it. giving a lecture Forget at it. Oxford? It's, it's not coming anywhere. No, go know? on. Sorry. Go on. I'm what? just saying. Right. You grow out of things. Yeah. And the old man, I'm sure, when he was a kid, he'd have a twit. <laughs> yeah. But now it doesn't look right. So he's having. <laughs> So, right. I don't think Werther's Originals were specially designed for old people. I think they were sweets that just happened to have been made for years. Mm. That's why old people eat them. Yeah. They didn't go, hang on, there's a market here. I've mm. noticed old people aren't eating Twixes. Quick, let's make some yeah. s old man sweets. But the, the, the little yeah. advert, he gives it to his grandson as well, doesn't he? He goes, I have a Werther's Original. No, I so, think it, it cuts though before he throws it back in his face and gets, <laughs> get, get me a Twix. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> FM 104.9, we're not here. Um, oh, it is a bit like being Dennis Norden, playing some great, uh, great moments from the show. I, I was just imagining Dennis Norden one day, sort of just like waking up out of his stupor, he's doing this, he'd go, and he'd go into the producer and go, I've just seen a couple of my programmes. I just saw it'll be right on the night 18. It's sh**. It is why, terrible. Why didn't someone tell me? Well, we, th we didn't want to upset you, because, uh, you know. But I've been doing it way too long. Well, you can just let me go on forever. Well, until you died, yeah. Well, why can't my son take over? Well, he's 80, Dennis. <laughs> and the jokes I'm doing, they're awful. They're just... Why have I got that clipboard? I, I've written these jokes. They're not funny. There's an audience. They're laughing. What are they laughing at? They're not at? laughing. They're not... They're not laughing. That's kind of laughter. Who are those audience? Who... Who goes to an audience for It'll Be Right on the Night? A lot of them are older than you. It can't be right. You know we have 15% fatality in one of your audiences. <laughs> but I went I went home at Christmas, I watched one of the episodes, yeah. which was with my family and friends, I said, watch this, you'll love it. Stony face, no one laughed, they all thought it was sh**. Well it is sh**. Well why didn't you tell me earlier? We didn't want to hurt your feelings, you're an old man. You may be upward of 102. <laughs> I didn't realise. Yeah. Here's a, a problem that someone's emailed in. Yeah. We're taking uh, emails today. If you've got a problem, a concern, um, or you know, just a general query that you think Carl could answer for you. It could be about anything. It could be about some of the big kind of philosophical questions. Yeah. Um, it could be uh, you know, something to do with war or famine, anything like that. Or it could just be a personal dilemma, you know, something that's happening locally. Anyway, this seems one that I think you probably have you and your father have probably come across this sort of dilemma in the past. Mm. And I'd be interested to know what your take is on it. Uh, let me see, this is from Lee Matthews by the look of it. He says, he lives in a suburban area where the local teenagers uh, also live on the same road and they're running riot. They're smashing wing mirrors off the cars, they're crashing into park cars on their skateboards and they're just generally making hay mayhem, you know, night and day. Uh, what can he do to stop this going on? Uh, the parents of the kids don't seem to give a damn. Anyone who complains to them, they just say, I'll oh, piss off. You know, the police are useless because they never catch him in the actual act of violence, which is what they got to do to, uh, apparently convict them. So, uh, they, they don't know who to turn to, really. Can't it's rather like when a little old lady went and got the A team, you know. The it's a, it's a, you know, and he was dressed as an elderly Chinaman. Exactly. She knew, she knew who he was. Colonel Decker didn't have a clue. Yeah. You see, it's weird because now, now it has got out of hand. Do sure. you know what I mean? Like years ago when I was growing up on the estate, um, yeah, you had problems, but not like you have now. Do you no. know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, the summers were nice as well, weren't they? <laughs> well, right. And Police are getting shorter, aren't you? But you yourself kind of admitted in the past that you were something of a tearaway. Didn't, you didn't do anything yeah, like never, these kids I mean, here. The but thing is, I was, I was scared that if I got caught doing it, my dad would go mad. Yes. And I remember smashing a car window by accident and legging it in the lounge 
and sort of pretending to go asleep on the settee. <laughs> Genius. And I heard a knock at the door. He chloroformed thought, himself. <laughs> just to be unconscious when his dad came home. And there was a knock on the door, and I thought, <laughs> oh god, this is a fellow he saw me. I was chucking a stone in the air, seeing how I could throw it. <laughs> of course and you he, were. He Did it keep landing on your head? <laughs> <laughs> that would explain a lot. <laughs> and, uh, it, it came down. Chucking a, a stone in the air, love <laughs> to it! To see how far I it's could throw brilliant. it. It's brilliant. So, you know, uh, I wasn't bothering anyone. Did you invent that, that game? Right, did so you get anyway. the stone for your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> go and play with your stone. He gave one to Suzanne. <laughs> Carl, go and play with your stone. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is, right, and it came down at a fun funny angle. And it, it, of course it did. It ate the back of this, uh car and the and the back window is the most expensive because it has that heating thing in it yeah, in case yeah. you got a frosty window yeah. so i thought oh god <laughs> so i legged it in got on the settee went to sleep knocked out the door <laughs> genius it's a brilliant plan it's a brilliant plan i <laughs> couldn't be guilty i'm asleep so, so i love the idea so uh, the thing is our lounge used to sort of you could you could see in from the door right so this family who uh <laughs> who saw me do it let, saw me asleep on the settee, and my mum said, go and get the door, and I sort of went, oh, as if I'd been asleep. Yeah. And went to the door, like, rubbing my eyes, and, uh, the fella said, what did you run off for? I saw you. I was like, oh, no. And I didn't see me dad, I went out, it was when he was working, sort of, evenings, so I went out so I didn't have to see me dad. And then the next day I came I came home from school, and my dad said, 45 quid. Oof. That's all he said, That's all he looked at me. And then you fell asleep when he went, wake up, wake up, you know what I said, <laughs> no, yeah. 45 quid, Now the thing Carl, is, he, right. he, he didn't have to do 45 anything. 45 pounds, Carl, now I know you were saving up for a brick, <laughs> but you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just do it. So, yeah, um, equally, if you're doing a bigger crime, you know, a yeah. bank job yeah. or a murder. Remember to take the stocking off your head, because they yeah. wake you up and go, why have you got a stocking on your head? Yeah. You just go, oh, I had a weird dream. <laughs> right, uh, Okay, look, quick um, query for you, this is from uh, Jay, he's got a problem here. Um, he says, uh, my parents won't let me ditch my studies. He's currently reading modern languages at London University. Sure. He wants to follow his dream, but his parents won't let him, of being a dancer. Carl. Worse than that, he says that they're trying to arrange a marriage to a bunch of, uh, minging daughters of people they know from good families. He doesn't know what to do, so he's got the arranged marriage coming along, and he's also got, you know, he basically wants to, you know, wants to be a dancer. His parents are forcing him into, um, something more practical. Well, the first thing, right, I don't think Live the, your dreams? the arranged marriage thing is such a bad idea. Okay. Because I think too many people go on looks, right, and then you soon get bored of that, mm -hmm. and you find out the person who you're knocking about with is actually not your type. Right. right. Why don't you arrange marriages for people? Well, uh, I'm just saying, right. So I'd say, uh, Jay, go along with that. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. I mean, if they're really ugly, then you know, don't go along with it. But if they're half bad, yeah, put up with it. That's sure. right. The dancing, brilliant. Right. <laughs> that's that solved. Brilliant. I want to be a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> After I did the boxing, right, I joined, uh, joined a dancing thing just near, um, Man United's ground, right, called Twiggies. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> went it? along, I wanted to learn some moves. How old were you? Well, it was when Michael Jackson was, like, pretty big, so, about 80, 83, 84, 85, oh, yeah. something like that, around there. Um, wanted to do it, um, when I went, it was shut and it had become, like, a warehouse for uh, toilet rolls. So in a way, I wonder what would have happened. Sorry, sorry, how is that an anecdote about you going through <laughs> dancing? Well, You've I'm told me before, you what, you did boxing for a while, you did dancing for a while, you had a true fight in the boxing, you didn't <laughs> even get in the pl That's not an- you yeah, Imagine if that was a film! This is my- um, a boy's dream of becoming a dancer. <laughs> oh, it's shut. Next on- I mean, you- How is that a story? Yeah, that was Billy Elliot. Do you think he would've won, <laughs> he won quite as many awards? Yeah, yeah, a brilliant. Footloose. Alright? <laughs> yeah. I'm fed up, they banned it. Let's go- Oh, it's shut. <laughs> um, do 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 yeah. Flash dance. First, there was- Ah, uh, it's a warehouse. <laughs> Never mind. You. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you'll find something else. I, I can't- I think I got a go-kart after that. <laughs> I bought a motorised go-kart and kept myself busy with that. So, <laughs> there's always, there's always all those just things. Just think, Alan Bennett has to sit down and really sweat over his stories. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So he just opens his mouth. You are a living Alan Bennett character. So that's oh. that. So, so that's that solved. Well, Jay, don't worry about that. There's, um, no emotional there- emotional problems, I can foresee. Uh, if you follow that advice- So the advice there stuff. is, do an arranged marriage. It, 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 if she's not If she's not ugly. minging. Yeah. She's not completely minging. Yeah. Uh, and don't worry about dancing, get a go-kart. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>
This is XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Jamais with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello. Uh, you're listening to the best of, basically, Carl Pilkington. You don't talk to anyone, do you, in the week? You just hide in your little sound booth thing and you really don't talk to anyone, do you? Much. Not really. No. no I mean, you, you know, you might call up. Yeah. Uh, but no, I keep myself to myself. Yeah. Then you don't get bogged down in the office politics and stuff. So. Yeah. Is there a lot of office politics here? I don't know. I don't get involved in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Proved your point. So, so, so yeah. when, um, we're away and we're, like, out of action, who, who, other than Suzanne, who will you talk to of a day? How will you get a sort of, uh, uh, f feedback from the world? How will you get sort of, like, input and... I always, if I've ever, uh, if ever I've got, like, a, a question on anything, the internet's sat there and I can just go on, online and find out... The internet is, is good. It's brilliant. But... It, it's not all verified. It's not all factually, necessarily factually accurate. Anyone can put things onto the internet. It's the, you know, that's it's, it's freaks and things that put on well, here's things one, right? like- Well, here's, here's one that I read in the week, right? One. <laughs> About this woman. Yeah. Uh, she was a bit of a punk. And, um, to get her hair done like she wanted it- Super glue. Right, no. She mm. got lard, apparently it's a popular thing, you might, you might know. Um, put lard on your head. Yeah. And you put it in the oven. <laughs> now, Apparently, the heat that you get from the oven is different from the sort of heat you get from an air dryer, right? And she had to do that to get the style that she wanted. But anyway, uh, she comes into money or whatever, treats herself to a microwave, right? It doesn't. It's not true. Carl. Opens the door, jams the things. You know, like the little catch, so so the microwave works. She jams it with a screwdriver or a knife or something. Yeah. Puts the microwave on, sticks her head in, boils her brain. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, <laughs> right? Well, why is that ridiculous? <laughs> Boils her brain. She boiled her brain. <laughs> <laughs> she boiled her brain. And this is what's good about the internet. I went straight from that and there was a subject about brains. And do you know that Russell Gr Crowe, when he dies, is, is giving his, his brain to charity or something? Some sort of... <laughs> some people who can do stuff right. with it. She gave hers to Pot Noodle. <laughs> <laughs> Vesta. Yeah. Oh. That's boiling the a skull. Yeah. That's, that's not true. No. It's not true, Carl. No. Just urban myths. Someone made it up. <laughs> yeah. For a laugh. They're, they're just too convenient, urban myths. Everyone to uh, you can tell an urban myth not true, because it's always, this happened to a mate of mine, and, and, the, and the, when you say, what happened then, they go, don't know, that was it. Was it? Was that it? Was it? Someone boiled a brain, and that was it. There was no <laughs> more story. Were there any dates, locations, have you, have it, times? A, I think it was in Belgium. There's that, there's that, there's that one. <laughs> 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 there's that one that a bloke, right, was gonna get a phone call, at four o'clock to find out if his business was, you know, okay, right? And if, if he didn't get the phone call, he knew he was, um, broke, destitute. So, uh, uh, dead on four o'clock, the phone didn't ring, so he went up to the, the, the roof, his office, and he jumped off to commit suicide. And as he was passing his window, the phone was ringing. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, it didn't happen. Didn't happen. Think it through. Think it through. Who, who, who told that story? Who told that story as he hit the pavement at 120 miles an hour? He's the only person who could have known those, that series of incidents. Also, why didn't and he he's wait, dead. as his life's at stake, why didn't he wait till five past? <laughs> I said, I'm gonna give it five minutes just in just case. Just in case the lines I, are busy. Yeah. And this, and what sort of, what sort of bloke goes, uh, I'll call you at four, okay, if your business, well, call me anyway. No, no, if I don't call exactly four, then, uh, no, yeah. you commit suicide. <laughs> commit suicide? <laughs> I would, because if I don't call at four, uh, that's the end of it. Well, call me anyway. No, that's not the way I work. <laughs> why can't you just call me and tell me the other way? Well, I'm telling you I would do it. <laughs> if you're bust, I don't call. Can't you just call to verify in case something goes wrong? What if it's engaged? It won't be engaged. <laughs> just commit suicide at four, please. <laughs> it, it didn't happen, Carl. Have you had the other one, right? A bloke, right? Uh, he's, he's on a, uh, train station, and, uh, uh, that's how I heard it, um, uh, he's, uh, uh he's waiting for his, uh, crew station, waiting for, and, um, he shits himself, uh, as you do, <laughs> and so he goes, oh, my train's in five minutes, I need, so he runs across to Millet's, and goes, quick, Levi's, 36, the bloke just puts it in a bag, he runs onto the train, uh, he goes into the, the toilet, takes his, uh, um, trousers and pants off. He's soiled. Yes. And pants. Throws them out of the window. I won't be needing those again. Cleans himself off. Open the bags. It's a jacket. Oh. No, it didn't happen, Carl! It didn't Carl. happen, Carl! 
at what point did he go into it and go, go, quick, Levi's 36, and the bloke went, sorry, Levi's 36, what, a pair? No, 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 no. shall I wrap them? Them? It. It? Shall I wrap? <laughs> Just wrap whatever it is. Do you want to look? No. Do, I'm not looking when you're putting it in the bag, please. Right? <laughs> Uh, well, 36 mm. white stories, well, well, not, don't say anything. <laughs> I've told you 36 Levi's. <laughs> they put it in a bag yeah. and charge me for it. Yeah. I uh, don't want to discuss it further. Yeah. There was one, um... There we go. There was one about a woman whose yeah. husband died, and she had him cremated. Yeah. And made, uh, made like a little egg timer out of him. Right. And she said, I did that. So it can still help around the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might be true. That might be a joke. That's quite sweet. That no, might be that true. Is true story again. It was all. No, not again. Because the ones I just told weren't. Nor is the boiling the brains in a bag curry microwave <laughs> head story true. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. Um, I'd like to play a beautiful song now by Cat Stevens called <coughs> Diddy White. It's it, it's lovely. A song for the lovers. Yeah. Big sale. <laughs> 